Simmons. Heather Connor. Welcome. Hey. Can you hear me? I know I'm a pretty short person, so I wanted to make sure the mic was good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, all right. So who would like to ask the first question to Heather Connor? First, Heather, do you want is there anything that you want to say? Um, well, I mean, we had a goal. We didn't hit it, but I guess, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. I think going into here, I felt very confident. Um, but some health issues came about um, pretty much last second, where about an hour and a half before weigh-ins, I had a ovarian cyst rupture. So um, a lot of pain on my left side, but, you know, you just – you do what you can, and I had the right people beside me. They knew about it, so it's not like I'm running to social media to let them, hey, you guys, um, the people that need to know, know, and they just continued to motivate me the entire time with encouraging words, even when, like, I was scared to death to be bracing against a belt. Like, so if you saw me walking out with deadlifts kind of, like, holding on to my belt, it was to alleviate pressure until the final second. So we did what we could. Yes. Do you think that that, I mean, I think you're known for a very controlled descent and mm -hmm. squat, and that's what we've seen from you in the past. Mm -hmm. Did that affect your, your descent and your bracing even more? Because it, it seemed like you were being a little bit more careful on the descent today. Um, so I typically go slow anyways. On the descent, I am more controlled due to my scoliosis making my um, pelvis turn. So if I'm a little bit too fast, I will hip shit pretty significantly. Um, but because, and that's on my left side where it's turned. So because of that ovarian cyst, you know, rupturing, I think it just added a little bit more pain to that area, um, which it did make bracing pretty difficult. Um, the goal from the beginning was always to hit the Carpino. Okay. Um, it was never to win um, because I did want to solidify my ticket to Worlds. Um, I've had a, a few national championships under my belt, so it's one of those things to where uh, when knowing what was going on, I had to come to terms with myself, like this is what I would have to do. Um, so I could – and I the technical table was like kind of looking at me like – are you going to try it? I'm like, no, because <laughs> is the, the risk worth the reward at the end? You know, um, after that final deadlift, there was a lot of pain. Um, so, you know, again, I'm talking to the right people, showing them like this is what's happening, running to the bathroom to make sure everything's okay. Um, and from the sounds of things, it's normal. <laughs> so um, the good news is I don't have to be rushed to the hospital or anything, but I also have to go and get it checked out. So, um, yeah, we just – you got to do what your body can do that day. And honestly, like, it was getting really tough, but it was still kind of moving. I was like, hey, is this going to happen? <laughs> but um, I assume Stephanie, uh, my friend over there, she didn't yell loud enough. Uh, so we can probably blame her for me missing that. Yeah. I always told myself it could be a little bit worse. I'm still here. You know, I'm still capable of squatting. There's pain, but there's movement. Um, and it's, again, one of those things, like, you have to kind of be realistic with yourself. I'm almost 32 years old. I'm not this young chicken running around. <laughs> like, this is, um, I might be in bed for a week. I don't know <laughs> after this. But um, it's, it's coming to terms and taking accountability as a, athlete like that's your responsibility to say to somebody that's handling you this is what's going on um you know there was a shift at the very beginning um, I did have my actual coach with me um, unfortunately he was removed from the warm-up area so that was a plot twist um, so thank goodness I had somebody with me who could come back and step up because that could have shifted my mindset a little bit um it didn't like it was just a little weird for me because nothing like that has happened. Um, I know it's happened to other people, but uh, I think my mental 
like state was kind of like everywhere at that point. Like, oh, there's this pain. Oh, my coach just left. Um, oh, I got to put the pressure on somebody that was just coming to spectate, you know? So again, if you have those right people in your corner, like it kind of takes your mind off of what's actually going on. I just want to say, first of all, congratulations for actually competing. I think that says a lot about you yeah. as a competitor and as somebody who um, showed up and under adverse circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, being obviously in pain and then not having your coach. Um, did the mindset shift a little bit for you when you felt like, okay, now I'm just, like you said, kind of going after the Carpino versus mm -hmm. strategizing against another competitor? Well, everything's a little bit strategy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, like, I think if you don't – if you come into a competition with no strategy, you're already about to lose. I always have A, B, C game plans. And it was always – every plan was to reach that. Um, but, again, like, you can have this great, you know, training leading up to a competition, and boom – something happens um that's just stuff that's out of our hands and that's kind of what I have to keep telling myself this is out of my hands I can only control what's right in front of me right now so my strategy had to shift a little bit um and I did lower my number some uh the only one I did not lower was my squat because I felt very confident with that um but I also changed up my second and third attempt some because of that pain um, and again, like you can be one of those ego lifters and say, you know what, I can push past this pain. I can do this. But again, once you reach a certain age, you got to kind of step back and say, I actually cannot push past this pain. Um, cause it will get significantly worse. But I think going into anything, you have to have some form of strategy. I think she has a lot of potential. Um, you know, as somebody that is young, she has a big future in the sport. She has a smart coach on her side, um, Jason. I, I do want to make sure I say Jason and nobody else. Um, I like Jason. He's very intelligent. Um, and I do think going to Worlds, she will have to shift some because, as we've seen in the past, international judges, a lot stricter. No, not, that's not to say the judges here are bad. But they have their standards, but international is a whole new game. Um, I do think that's enough time for them to fix some technical things um, because when you get to Worlds, it's you miss a lift, you lose. And you're going against very, very strong women, but she's also a very strong woman. Um, so I think end of the day, if they, you know, strategize like Matt Gary was talking about, they will be able to put something nice together. But – now is the time to do it. Not a week out, <laughs> wondering if you hit elbow depth because, you know, it's, it's one of those things like, oh, God, now I've got to post this and the Internet's going to see it and they're all going to have their opinions. And young people, they get in their heads a lot. Um, so hopefully there's more constructive criticism than there is actual criticism on things. Anything to help boost the lifter's confidence rather than just rip it apart. Um, so hopefully if that happens... Um, I can kind of step in because I know she'll reach out. And um, she wanted to hug me immediately when I got off. But I was rushing to the bathroom. I was like, just, just give me one second, you know, um, because I do like to give due diligence to the person and congratulate them. This isn't the first time I've ever lost. But at the end of the day, you got to you got to be the good sport. Right. You got to make sure that you are still somebody they can reach out to at the end of the day, no matter if you're winning or you're losing, because, again, like. At the end, we are a team, and we are trying to get you to Worlds to be the best that you can be. Um, so I think there's a big future as long as the plan is correct. All right, Ashley. Well, thank you so much for coming to this. Really appreciate it. No problem. All right. <laughs> cool. Thank you. It's always a pleasure seeing you, Matt Gary. <laughs> you and your wife. You, you cheered me. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. 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 Get well. Get your ebook. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah, you. I heard, I heard. It was pretty good. Okay. Uh,
<laughs> Excellent. Yes. Oh, Steve, he's on the, he's on their interrogation as well. Yes. yes. They heard I, I'm actually part of two white lights. They didn't, they didn't realize it <laughs> until now. Cool. <laughs> so we have with us the 57 kilo champ, Natalie Richards. And uh, first thing that we want to do is just if you have anything that you want to say, or if Steve, if you have anything that you want to say to start off with, we'll start off with that, and then we'll open it up to questions. All right. Um, really just thank you to everyone who supported me with the gym, Doug, Lindsay, and then all the guys that came to support me today as well. Uh, Wes, Grayson, and Jovi, and this Steve, Steve Reno here. Yep. So thank you guys. Steve, grab that mic closer to you. All righty. Yeah, I mean. Do you want to talk about uh, the performance that Natalie put up? Yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. We've been only been working together for a short time, I think 15 weeks. And I mean, I told her when we first started yeah. working together, we may not push because, I mean, the Carpino score for 478, that was something she could she could do on, like, second attempts. So we didn't know from the get-go if we were going to be pushing. But, I mean, it's been fantastic so far. We've hit a good rhythm on pretty much all three lifts. So training was going really well. Um, and even leading in, uh, we learned a lot of stuff that will probably change going into Worlds. Um, the peaking block probably wasn't actually the smoothest, but it turned out really well today with some things we did in the last couple weeks to kind of – uh, dissipate a bit of fatigue and she just crushed it today she did scare me with tempoing her her opening deadlift because she was Keep so scared about toes. going up and down and then she ended up using, moving that 221.5 faster than her opener so yep i like to keep you on your toes you know? yeah well, um i heard you at one point say we're going to malta um what when was that was that on, was that on the first deadlift yeah first deadlift she had it locked in on her yep opener? yep wow. yep so we had that planned out from the get-go because I had, I mean, fortunately, the uh, national record was only, in, in comparison to what she can deadlift, was only 187.5. So we knew whatever we needed on that opener, we were just going to put in. Mm -hmm. um, if she had hit that third bench, it only needed 193. So I had it all written down of exactly what we were going to need to hit that 478. Prepared. <laughs> uh, Natalie, first of all, I just want to say congratulations on your first uh, Powerlifting America national championship. Thank you. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, uh, you, I mean, you knocked this out of the park. Um, no, on the, I've squatted a little bit more in squat. Okay. I think I benched a little bit more before, but deadlift, yes, personal yeah. best all time. And, and total as well. Yeah, yeah. tipped it. This in perspective, this 501.5 kilo total is now the number one total in the history of drug tested powerlifting at 57 kilos. How does that make you feel? It's pretty cool. That, <laughs> that could arguably be the shot heard around the world with the Sheffield coming up. Um, might you anticipate these two girls upping the total or, you know? Oh, I think they're going to, I think they're going to up it. Uh, yeah, but I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready? Yeah. And, and you're going to Malta, so yeah. hopefully you can lock horns with them in the future. Yes. <laughs> so on that note, Natalie, you won't be at Worlds, but you're, or at Sheffield, but your number will be there. And so we'll have to talk about you now at Sheffield. It's exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> Who else has a question? Um, seems like the only, like, modern flip on the day with bench, was that an attempt selection issue? Uh, I just strength. <laughs> I think I unracked it a little bit weird, and then just at that point, it was like yeah, a with how, tough. <laughs> with how 105 move, I was really confident yeah. she had 110, and she's hit 110 multiple times in training. Um, I told her afterwards, I immediately noticed when she went to unrack it, she was further back on the bench. So I think that flattened her out a little bit in the sense that she said she touched lower because of that, which would be a very common yeah. thing. When you kind of flatten out that rib cage, you're going to eventually touch lower and dump that bar away. So I think, I mean, when you get to those max attempts, I mean, you, you, there's, that's where you have to be perfection with technique. Those little slight deviations can make a big difference, and so we'll come back and nail that yep. next time. Pretty much. Um, I was just going to ask, I mean, obviously, Matt, you and I have a little bit of history because I coached against you last year at Nationals, working with Celine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah an unfortunate incident at Nationals, obviously, where we bombed the deadlift. And so I just wanted to ask you, um, first of all, I wanted to say, Steve, great call on the opening deadlift because you locked in the Carpino, which was, I think was a wise and very strategic play. Did you have in the back of your mind, you know, given the last experience um, and knowing that you had to tidy things up a little bit, was that kind of weighing on you heavily, or were you confident based on the technical corrections that you made in training? Uh, obviously, I was still nervous. Like, we changed a little bit with my grip. We switched from hook to uh, mixed grip, like, I don't know, four weeks ago. Yep. <laughs> uh, and it definitely made me a lot more confident. So that was good. Like, I did have that in the back of my mind, like, okay, don't do anything stupid, uh, my opener. But <laughs> after that, <laughs> so I tempoed it. You're welcome. Yeah. After that, I felt – so much more confident and it's really not like an issue anymore because i do feel like our technique is cleaned up a lot yeah all right any one last final question so we can let natalie get out of here <laughs> 
<laughs> nothing is. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she asked me before her opener what should yeah. I be thinking about going into deadlift and like, like what do you mean she's like well and she started listening I was like no just go lift it yeah. you're good you have this just go lift it there's no issues anymore I mean I was incredibly confident in her strength as well as like looking back to the, the mishap with the shoulders there's a lot of things that have been corrected um, it just is a non-issue anymore so. yeah it was just like go out there get it like you earned this weight so it was fun it was fun alright that's it so alright thank you alright thank you thank you so much Dude, you get Joe over here. Yeah. Makes my life easier. On this. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, Riley. Is he trained? No, he's just washed here. Are you good, Mike? Go ahead, man. All right, we got uh, the 66 kilo champ, Brian Lee, and his handler, Joe Stan. Uh, so to start off with, uh, if you want to say anything, yeah, I just uh, I would like to say shout out Joe for uh, handling me, um, and then Charlie Yang for uh, housing me, uh, showing me a good time around here, and then uh, Allison, Valerie for coming out to support, uh, and then just the rest of my friends uh, watching back home in Washington, and a special shout out to Wasker for also uh, qualifying for Worlds. Just that I'm I'm really proud of of Brian. Um, he's had a lot of ups and downs over the course of my knowing him as a, a lifter and being able to push himself to the highest level to get to the world championships is is huge. Yeah, I'll just start off and first of all say congratulations to you both. Congratulations on hitting Thank the you. Carpino and for uh, you know qualifying to go to the world championships. Um, just a question about the squat. So. Um, I think if I remember correctly, on your second squat, you were called on depth. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you were going up against a guy like Jonathan Garcia, who's a supreme level squatter, mm -hmm. was there ever a thought in either of your mind to go ahead and bump your attempt up because you knew that the strength was there? Or were you thinking, you know, let's strategically obviously, you know, stay at the same weight, which you did. I just wonder if that was even on the table. You want to take this over? Or? Yeah, I mean, so... Uh, I have I have one rule. If you miss on a technicality, you do not go up. Learned that from uh, one of the best. Um, and I mean, I think it served us well here. Uh, I don't necessarily think that 242 was all Brian had, but I think getting down to a proper depth kind of took a little bit more energy than we would have liked. So I think if we would have gone up, that may have cost us the third squat, which certainly would have made the competition closer. Yeah, I think uh, two biggest changes, uh, just for squat, just squatting deeper in general throughout training. And then I think mainly for bench, um, just holding my benches at the top a bit uh, before descending. And then I think maybe trying to train in uh, some sort of like new shoes. Um, I think I had a little bit of slipping that kind of messed with me on the second unrack. So um, yeah, I think we'll just, you know, change a little bit of training and then see if uh, some new shoes would help out. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think the, the main goal going into deadlifts was, you know, like regardless of where I was in placing, I think we just wanted to hit the Carpino. Um, that was the goal in the second attempt. And then I think, you know, once that was there and I think, you know, we were pretty sure we would stay in first, I think just a third attempt that was like above a PR for just the total and then deadlift for me, I think was um, kind of the goal. Um, maybe had a little bit more, but... I think that was the right call for today. Okay, uh, last question for Matt Gary, go ahead. Yeah, um, 
first of all, again, congratulations on your total. And just to put things in perspective, because um, you totaled 713.5, if we're looking at the landscape of powerlifting, that would have placed you second in this weight class in South Africa. Um, so how do you feel potentially you know, going into Malta and potentially locking horns with some of these other guys in the weight class? Um, I'm excited. I think, you know, being able to get pushed um, by other competitors and I think just being, um, I guess, shown a new culture and just competing in a new country um, will be fun. Um, and, yeah, I think, you know, this performance might, like, kind of gets my name out there to the rest of the world, so I think it'll be uh, exciting. No. Awesome. All right. Thank you, and congratulations on your national championship. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Ready for her? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Great job, guys. Congrats. Yeah. Can you guys congratulations? Thank you. Well done. Congrats. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kilo champ, national champion, Jessica Espinal. And to start off with, um, do Jessica, you or Jason want to say anything, uh, kind of like an opening statement on your performance? Um, I don't know. I just brought the best I could today. <laughs> I, I, I would say um, I'm, I'm proud of, of Jessica because she uh, fought to, uh, she fought through two uh, difficult things today. Um, and I, I feel like grew as a competitor um, from, from doing so. Um, number one being uh, we had a little lower body injury uh, two weeks uh, earlier. Um, and I, I know it was hard on her to, to keep it together during that time, um, but she, she did awesome with it. Um, and then Number two was uh, when we missed our, our bench opener. Uh, everyone in the in the in the crowd was was pretty shocked about it, and um, she held it together really well and um, came out and made it. And then we we got on with our plan from there. So um, it was it was a very resilient performance from her, and that's that's what I'm proud of. I just want to start by saying that congratulations, Jessica. On, Thank you. On, on winning your national championship, obviously, and Jason, congratulations, coach, as well. Um, after hitting an American record in the squat, you know, sometimes competitors think, I just want to get that record locked in, and then you came out and kind of missed the opening bench. Can you kind of walk us through what happened and what was going through your mind after the missed opener? Because in the crowd, a lot of us were, you know, surprised. Yeah, and I definitely, like, um, felt that from everybody. Everybody was like, oh, my gosh. Nobody expected that. Um, so in the warm-up room before bench, we were warming up and, um, Jason and Arian were like, oh, that's kind of borderline. Like, we don't know if that'll be 100% on the platform. Maybe you could try to lower it just a little bit. Like that, that's all we need. And I was like, okay, I did. Um, when I went onto the platform, I of course gave myself a self lift off. Usually that's not an issue in training ever. Um, not even off the chest is usually an issue either, but I, I don't know, maybe I just brought in my hands a little bit too much, sank a little too deep to where like I didn't keep my tension in and it just didn't come up off the chest. And ultimately after that, I just like thought about it a little and I was like, well, what's next? What do I have to do next? Because I have to come back from this. There's no changing it now. I just have to do it. Right, I have no option now, so that that's basically what was running through my mind. And Jason and everybody back there that was talking to me, they were like, "You got this! Like, you've hit this many times before in training. This shouldn't be an issue. Just like stop thinking about what you just did and focus on the next one." And I was like, "Okay." 
because of the new elbow death rule, did you come in with different game plans for bench um, if you saw it being interpreted um, on the platform different, in different ways? Yes, okay. for sure. Uh, when, what, were the, what were the different ways? Were you going to move in your grip or lower your arch? Or... Yeah, both. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to landmark with mm-hmm. someone who has a hypermobile spine yeah. mm-hmm. how how much you should arch right because all you know is your maximum yeah. um so we had to landmark other things like where her butt is on the bench where her feet are um even grip width so and did you do anything between the first and second attempt to change? Did you just go back out there and do do what you have been doing in training instead of doing the kind of changes that you were thinking about right before? Exactly. Yeah, because um, on that first one, like I said, I changed it immediately. And then after that, I was like, okay, let me just do what I've been doing. If it goes, it goes. If not, we'll see what happens next. Yeah, she uh, I, she went back and I saw her uh, meditating in, in the back room, which I think in times of panic, um, you should have a strategy for that. And, um, yeah, that was another thing that I was like, that's awesome. Uh, so, uh, calm herself down. And then, um, I also encouraged her not to think through the next attempt and just to go out and do it. Um, cause when you're in that situation, you gotta, you gotta at least make it right. And then, and then see what the refs think. So, um, yeah, we just kind of made that adjustment back to how we practice. It looked like you. Yeah, I was just going to ask, um, having such a lead at subtotal, but knowing that you're going up against a world-class deadlifter, mm-hmm. was, what was your mindset kind of going into to deadlifts, knowing that, hey, you know, Heather might be able to load up and kind of catch us? Um, I was just taking it one step at a time. Honestly, that's the best thing you can do in that situation because I can't control what she's going to take next. What if it was her best day and she's pulling 205? Like, you never know. So all I could think about is, what can I do on this day right now? I'm not thinking about what she's doing because she will deal with that on her own and I will deal with this on my own. All right. Well, that's it for Jessica Espinal. Congratulations, and we'll see you in Malta. Thank you so much. And your cancer is 50 years older than you are. Was, was her, yeah. was her, was her was no, that's exactly yeah. what you have to do. Just focus on what you can do. Yeah, you can focus on what somebody else is doing. Congratulations. Yeah. Good job. Congratulations. Good job. Yeah, it's exciting. All right. <sighs> Should I put it on here like a UFC you fight? Alright, we have the 59 kilo national champion, Waskar Carpio, and his coach, Steve Denobi. Welcome. Do you have any opening statement that you'd like to give as summarizing your performance? Uh, no, but, you know, we did it. We, we had a goal in mind uh, to hit that Carpino one, and we executed. Um, and that's, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say it. I've coached a lot of people. I don't know if I've ever coached someone that has put in what he has done to get to this point. Um, The amount he's had to do diet-wise, training-wise, sacrifices with family time, all the stuff, I don't think I've had anyone else who sacrificed as much as he has to do this. And I almost was getting emotional when when he hit that because I wanted it so bad for him. I'm so excited that he's going to fulfill that dream and get to be there in Malta. Yes. So, I mean, it was by far one, the best prep that I've had, but it's one of the longest because uh, as soon as I finished my last nationals, I right away contacted Steve and he took me on as an athlete. So we started prepping for this meet uh, about eight months ago and the grind started. So, um, you know, it's a long prep and long sessions and the sacrifices that I had to make was, you know, I, I, I work a full-time job, so going from work to the long gym sessions, um, not being able to see my son that day or, 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 or my wife, so I knew coming into today, um, I had to execute. I, I wanted to leave it all out there to make sure that I left 
no kilos out or I didn't regret not doing something or attempting anything um, because of everything that went that went into this prep. I wanted to make sure that when I left that platform, I did everything in my power um, to to attempt to make that world team and we executed so. As well as power lifters, we like to eat. That's yes. Kind of the, that's kind of the cool part about power lifting. You yeah. don't have to be like a bodybuilder. This dude's been dieting for six months. <laughs> I, I don't think most people know his last meet, he cut the week up from 146 to 132. And when he started with me, the day, the first call, I said, dude, we're not doing that. Yeah. There's no way you're going to world and traveling overseas and going to do that and be successful. You've got to be within five pounds in the weight class. And he weighed 134 this week before we cut. And Correct. shows on the platform. Yes. So yes. six months of no cheats. <laughs> <laughs> every single day on top of his macros. I mean, it, it's, it was, it was, he took everything. Yes. Um, first of all, I just want to say congratulations to both of you. Thank you. On, on the victory today. Uh, if I'm doing the math correctly, you won by a significant margin. Like yeah. Six kilos. Right. I believe. Um, was the mindset going in that you were actually competing against these other competitors or was it more about, Hey, I'm just trying to lock, I, you know, I think I'm stronger and I just want to lock in this total. Uh, absolutely. That, that, that was the goal. We knew going into it that, uh, the, the most, um, challenging part will be the Carpino. Um, we knew we were, you know, uh, ahead of the competition. Um, so we wanted to make sure that, that we, we secured it, um, first and foremost. Um, so that was the goal to, uh, secure the Carpino by the second deadlift and then have fun on the third. <laughs> Just a follow-up question. How close do you think you were on the third deadlift? Because I know, like you said, I mean, strategically you locked in the Carpino with the second. Correct. Right mm -hmm. yeah. And then with the third one, how close do you think you were? I, you know, it's going to help me until I get it on the platform because um, it, was, it, was, it was right there. Uh, we, I'm going to watch the video back, and I'm sure Steve will do too, so we can learn from that specific pool. Um, so to make sure that it doesn't happen again, what, what happened, we believe it was a possibly lost a position in or, or bad start position. Um, so that will haunt me. Um, but, but next time I attempt it, the leave is going to go up. I told him the perfect day wouldn't have given him any motivation from Alta. Like yeah. he needed, he needed something to, to spark it. And if, if you didn't know, uh, that was to beat Charlie Yang's current best American total at 59. He had 622.5 and we loaded that up since we had the Carpino already hit. We had mm -hmm. the world team spot. We wanted to go 623 and see if we can get that. Correct. So we'll get yeah. that next time. Yes, we will. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? Okay, I'll ask the last one. Is just what's next for you, Oscar? You know, I uh, I want to spend a lot of time with my son um, here. I know this this next time, Steve's not gonna take it easy on me, and I'm expecting that. I, I I want him to to push me to to the breaking point and and pull me back, because um, I know that attempting what I want to do, which is becoming a world champion, um, representing Team USA. It's something that I've dreamed about since joining this, this sport. And uh, it's something that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust my butt, and uh, I'm, I will become a world champion when it's, when it's due. All right. And uh, tonight you're going to go eat some food? Yes, I will. And we already got a taco truck pulled up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Of dealing with a back injury for so long I was happy to perform the way I was and you know hit a pretty decent total considering how my training was going I was pretty surprised to be honest <laughs> yeah it looked like uh, just being in the warm-up room and then watching you come off after some of your openers you were like let's go there's 
something here. How were you feeling? I mean, were you feeling really good? I was feeling very excited. It was earlier today. I was feeling a little, a little. I wouldn't want to say down, but I was very concerned about how things were going to turn out, just because of how prior weeks were feeling. But after the openers feeling the best my lifts have felt in weeks, I was very, very excited to see what we could actually put up. I'm super happy for you. Congrats Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, Chrissy, I've known you since 2017, Orlando, and I've seen you go through stuff, particularly with knee injuries and so forth. And um, I just want to say, uh, friend to friend, that you embody what it means to be a competitor and what it means to be a warrior. And you inspire me. Um, and other lifters out there to do better. Can you give us a little bit of details? You know, because we're used to kind of hearing about the knees, and this time it was a back. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that happened? Um, what exactly was going on? It was at towards the end of the summer. I was doing my last drop down set of deadlifts, and it was actually pretty lightweight. Um, and the last rep, I can't. I've watched the video like a million times. I don't even know exactly what went wrong, but I felt it you know, lower lump, like back, left side. And, you know, I got it treated right away twice a week with my physical therapist because I've been seeing him ever since my first knee surgery two years ago, twice a week. And we were trying to, you know, get it, get it better any way we could, but I was doing feet up bench for about six to eight weeks because I just couldn't even get my feet down to, you know, get into the arch. And then as that kind of got a little bit better, it started to flip over to squats and deadlifts that even, you know, doing an unrack on squat with an empty bar, it was bothering me. So it's been a pretty frustrating process, but we were able to keep it at least at baseline so I could compete the way I did today. And just to follow up on that, how are your pre-existing injuries? Everything good with the knees? Are you ready? Are you good to go after this once you get the back straight out? Uh, I have my good days and my bad days, but for the most part, they're pretty good. Uh, drop the load and, you know, just re get this recuperated and see what happens. Give it a little bit of a break and then, you know, ramp stuff up again. Is your next goal to come back and win the national title next year? Yes, it is. Always is. And you do 57 or you think about do 63? Oh, 57. 57 for sure? Yep, definitely. You like to stay shredded? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's a great competitor, great lifter. I'm excited to see what she does on the world level. I guess I have one more follow-up question about the bench. I don't know if you can feel the audience on your third bench, but we were all pulling for you, and I think you, you locked it out, but they called you for your butt coming off. Yep. Do you think that that was a, a function of the back being kind of tweaked, or, or did you just kind of lose position? Or? Uh, my feet slipped a little bit as it was, you know, coming off my chest, and then – I also didn't feel like I could exactly get into my arch the way I usually do. And in training, I've been um, benching with blocks under my feet and decided today that it was probably better to control all the variables I could. So I decided to go feet down on the floor and that might've had a little bit to do with it, but I am proud to even lock that out at all because that would have been a pretty big PR for the day. So I'm happy with it either way. Um, deadlift, it was a little slower than I wanted, but deadlifts have been pretty tough the last few weeks anyways, and especially after bench, my back was feeling pretty crappy, to be honest with you guys, so for it to move the way it did, I'm still proud of, and even with my total, like, it was, I think, five kegs under my best, and the fact that I was, you know, not feeling great going into this to be that close to my PR total, I'm pretty proud of. I'm actually very happy with the way Tate turned out. <laughs> That's awesome. You got a follow up? All right. Well, with that, um, we'll let you go and uh, let's go out to beer. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. I need to Sorry, I was one. getting emotional. I was uh, getting emotional. Oh, I know. No, I love you so much. I love you too, man. Your words mean a lot to me. That's freaking awesome.